All right, what's going on, boys and girls? So I'm going to quickly explain where I've been. Uh, I just did a live stream earlier, so content. B, COVID, kind of a bitch, just going to lie. Not say a lie there. Um, my recording area has been kind of locked down, so I can't do what I would normally do. So it's going to be a lot of these, a lot of live streams, not so much in the reaction stuff right now. But this is kind of a reaction video because we're going to be talking GIMP versus Photoshop. And I love the work that the GIMP guy, the GIMP team and the developers behind GIMP do for that program. It is 90% of what anybody could ever need for their photo manipulation needs. 90%. There's a 10% that a lot of people who push this Photoshop versus GIMP, GIMP versus Photoshop narrative don't understand. GIMP lacks in certain features that professionals in different fields are going to need. Novel idea. Photoshop provides them. So use Photoshop. Example. The content aware fill that Photoshop does. GIMP has no comparable feature. Nothing at all. CMYK support, not there. Um, yes, you can import brushes into GIMP and stuff, but it's there is a long list of things that GIMP does not support or have that those in the that end of professional work needs have and if you are gonna push that those people say fuck you that the, you're giving them the wrong that's like giving someone a fucking <laughs> that's like giving someone the hammer but not the fucking nail like give me a break okay I got a half a tool I can't actually make the support strut to actually hold anything. And that's what you're doing. To put a play on the term, the name, you're gimping their productivity and the, the quality of the work that they need to do. At, and you're put, people continue to push this narrative. News flash. In 2020, that narrative is old, tired, played out, and wrong. For most people in consumers and even some prosumers, now prosumers, for those that don't understand, can use can either prof need professional level stuff of a certain variety, but they mostly usually are looking for a consumer price or it's a consumer who needs certain aspects of a professional tool or whatnot. That's the generic view of a of a prosumer. And that's where GIMP falls in. Because GIMP can work for most prosumer level stuff. But to push the narrative that it's great for all professionals, you're sadly mistaking. You're understating what professionals need. You apparently don't know what the fuck a professional needs in certain aspects and areas of of uh creation that you might not understand. So to the people who make these suggestions and say that GIMP's a great alternative to a 90% yes, to the 10% no. Because remember, there is a ma the majority is not always right. There is a 10%, and that is a big 10% of content creators who have a need that cannot be met by this application, i.e. GIMP. And if you're too do blind, dumb, deaf, head up your ass, buried in the sand, maybe you're buried six feet under, I don't know, but you cannot continuously push that narrative because it's wrong. So people want to know my take and my opinion, there you go. GIMP is great for 90% of the people on the planet meet most of your photo editing needs there's a, but it doesn't solve the needs of everyone
everybody. So to suggest that it does, you're just as bad as the people pushing the 10% solution onto the 90%. Give them the right one they need, not the one you want to force down their fucking throat.